The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. Benjamin J. Heckendorn was a mild-mannered graphic artist until he was bitten by the electronics bug. Now, every week he takes on new projects, shares tips and tricks, and answers your viewer questions on The Ben Heck Show. Hello and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. You probably have heard that I'm working on a ghost hunting themed pinball machine. A big part of the gameplay is the music, so I've teamed up with a local musician who's producing the game's soundtrack. In return, I'll be modding his MIDI controller for him. What he wants to do is make it into a custom enclosure that will look like a guitar. Let's get started. But first, the news. Today in Ben News, I would like to show you this Williams System B display I rigged up. Reading the schematics, I was able to reverse engineer how it was driven by the original hardware over 20 years ago. Basically what you do is you draw a character here and here on each row, and then using these lines you pulse which column you want it to appear on. And then by pulsing which character with which column, and doing it very rapidly, you cause the entire line to fill up. So this would be good for simpler pinball machines that don't need the full-fledged DMD, and these displays are a little cheaper too. So here's our MIDI controller. I'm gonna take it apart, look inside, and then figure out the best way to move the parts around for our project. So I've got Kevin here to help me take apart his MIDI controller. That way I can blame him if something goes wrong. <laughs> Looks like we have our USB and power driver board here, and then this main board is kind of like a peripheral to that. A little zip socket here, so we're gonna pull the edges of it like that so we can remove it. Oh, we have to remove the uh, these things. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scan this plate with a scanner because that's redundant. Then I can reproduce the holes and cut them in a new piece of material. Here's the board all taken apart. Kevin wants us to do two things. He wants to move eight of these switches to the neck of his new guitar, and he also wants to move these slide potentiometers up here. So I'm going to start by desoldering all of these. Now I have to see which connections are discrete and which ones are unique to each slider. So I only have to rewire the bare minimum, so it doesn't take forever. It's connected. These don't appear to be connected to anything. These are the same. Now that I've removed all the slide switches, I'm going to mount them to this new circuit board so I can put it down here. So I'm putting the uh, potentiometers onto this PCB, and the PCB wasn't quite big enough, so I've had to extend it but I think it'll work out. So I'm kind of stitching these boards together. I'm just putting uh, leads through some of these unused connections and the boards will become one. Here I've extended the connections going to the potentiometer. We're going to test it out before we wire the rest and make sure it's going to work.
All right, we have all these sliders hooked up and extended to this side of the board, so we're gonna make sure they work before we move on. Kevin, wanna take the controls? You can see that they're all working, including the master slider. Now that we've moved the sliders to this side of the unit, we're going to extend these buttons out so they can be on the neck of the guitar thing we're building. Here you see the potentiometers in their new position. They were down here, and now they're over here with their own little board. I've also added some ribbon cable here so we can extend these eight buttons out to the neck of the guitar. Now we're going to scan this into the computer so all the components fit. I'm doing it one piece at a time. I started by making a paper pattern of the main button matrix. I can line the paper pattern up to make sure it fits. Looks like it fits pretty good. It's a little off, but it won't be a big deal. And we'll just double, triple check using the buttons themselves. Beep, boop, boop, beep, boop, boop. What we'll do when we actually make the final material that we cut this out of, we'll actually increase the, the uh, opening here a little bit just to give it a margin of error. So now I've got to map in the rest of this and see if that fits. Now here's a paper pattern of the potentiometer area. We're gonna line it up, make sure it fits, and ah, fits quite well. That's why it's good to take careful measurements. Okay, so I've got the paper pattern made so it matches up the buttons, and the paper pattern is also the exact size of the circuit boards. So we can use this to design the actual enclosure for the MIDI guitar now. And this is what's gonna be inside it, along with the crossfader thing. So here is our reworked motherboard for the MIDI controller along with the crossfader. And then we designed this so that we know the exact size of it, the motherboard versus all the buttons. And in our next episode, we're gonna use this plate here to design the actual enclosure for the MIDI guitar. Here we've taken the paper template and put it up on our whiteboard and drawn an actual size guitar around it. What we're gonna do in our next episode is take this and make a cool design and we're gonna use a CNC machine, we're gonna use the laser engraver, whatever we can to make this look really cool. My rant today is about how our game consoles are way too old. Historically, there should have been a new Xbox two years ago. The worst part is, PC gaming could be far more advanced than it is right now, but instead it's held back by ports from seven-year-old hardware. To put this in perspective, imagine Doom on the NES, Half-Life on the PS1, or Far Cry on the Dreamcast. Sound awful? Well, that's where we are right now. Upscaled gaming stagnation on ancient hardware. My rave today is about PC gaming, which still isn't dead. Digital distribution like Steam is super convenient and saves you trips to the store. The online multiplayer is free and the games are usually cheaper since they don't have the console license fee attached. You can mod them however you please and since everything is a console port anyway, a reasonably priced video card runs most stuff just fine. Smaller developers can publish games without an approval process. Finally, some games like Battlefield 3 are more advanced than their console brethren and do indeed give us a taste of the next generation. Today's viewer question comes from Adam Herring who asks, We often see you using various drawing and design programs. Can you give us a rundown on the programs you use and how we can learn the skills to use them ourselves? I do most of my 2D design in Adobe Illustrator as a residual side effect from being a graphic artist back in the day. For 3D printed designs, I use Autodesk 123D, a free program similar to Inventor. Autodesk and Adobe have extensive online videos that cover all of their products, as do most companies. The tutorials are out there for you to find. That's all the time we have for today. Now that we have the electronics figured out for the MIDI controller mod, next episode we can design and build the custom case. We'll see you then. Stay tuned at element14.com forward slash TBHS where you can join the discussion, suggest builds for the show, and even have a chance to win upcoming builds. Remember, you can always email build ideas to benheck at element14.com. Thanks for watching.